welcome again. And welcome to Anna Andrinskaya. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Okay. Um, who is joining us tonight from Kiev and uh, who will be talking with us about business intelligence and Jira service management. So making sense out of the myriad of data and KPIs that Jira service management generates and that are beyond the normal charting tools that Jira provides. So um, without further ado, Anna, over to you and um, to your presentation. And I will just disappear and see you on the other side. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleasant to be here with you today. And I thank you for inviting me to share some experience that we have uh, in terms of uh, connecting Jira, Jira service management to BI and in terms of ge general business intelligence uh, in uh, Atlassian tools. Okay, uh, okay, so let's start. Um, as mentioned, we'll be talking about business analytics uh, today. I just uh, have uh, some things uh, to say in advance that uh, first of all, I will be mentioning Jira and Jira service management, or I can say Jira service debt, you know that it's the same <laughs> because uh, it's, it's a matter of habit to say Jira service debt instead of Jira service management. So it's, it's the same thing we are talking about. And of course I will be talking about Jira and Jira service management because these two um, uh, softwares uh, are very close uh, and um, sometimes people use both of them very often and that's why Due to the close of the topic, I will be mentioning uh, them too. But the focus of uh, today's presentation will definitely be to Jira Service Management or Jira Service Desk. Uh, okay, uh, so just a few words about myself uh, to get acquainted. Uh, my name is Anna. Uh, I am a Chief Strategy Officer and a Managing, managing Partner from AlphaSurf. Uh, AlphaSurf is a Classic Marketplace Partner for the three years already. Uh, previously, um, and we are still doing this, and previously we have been doing the software development. So it's our co-business, uh, it's our co-competence uh, to uh, develop the software and to develop the applications. Um, me personally, I'm not a technical person. I don't have a technical background. That's why if you have some specific technical questions today, I will be happy to uh, write them down and come back to you uh, as Jork mentioned uh, to, to, to provide you with uh, exact and relevant information. But those which I can answer, I will definitely answer today. Uh, but at the same time, I have uh, some business, not some, but business background and corporate background. That's why I'm very well acquainted with business analytics and with um, KPIs and with uh, department work planning. So I hope this uh, will be helpful for me today to share some information for you. Uh, so, as I already mentioned about AlphaSoft, I just would like to add that uh, we work not only on the Atlassian marketplace uh, and uh, actually the data extraction and data export for further analysis is uh, one of our core competences in terms of app development. And we have applications on the Atlassian marketplace, on Shopify marketplace and on Magento marketplace. Uh, so. Uh, what about the agenda today or what I plan to talk uh, about? Um, first, I will give you just a brief introduction about what is business analytics and generally what BI tools uh, are available today. Uh, I will mention why a Jira service management is considered to be an important data source for the business and for the service desk teams, uh, first of all. Also, uh, I will give you overview of the exporting options um, which are available in general, the, the variety of exporting options to export your Jira or Jira service management data to uh, various uh, BI tools that you may use in your company. And uh, I will compare them and highlight uh, a few um, specialities that they may have. And uh, in the end, I will finish with the um, examples of how a Jira service management dashboard uh, can look like uh, in Power BI. So the Power uh, Microsoft Power BI tool will be uh, an example uh, today. 
Uh, and in the end, uh, as mentioned, we'll have a Q&A session. And if you have some questions, feel free to ask. I will try my best to answer today or come back to you uh, later with a competent reply from our technical colleagues. Uh, so we can start. Um, let me do like this. Um, so uh, a few words about business analytics. Um, uh, business analytics uh, focuses on developing insights and uh, understanding the business performance. What it means, uh, you know that um, uh, in books they say you cannot change anything until you can measure this. And uh, this is what stands behind business analytics. Uh, it's based on the actual data analysis and it helps to find insights, to find bottlenecks, uh, to drive decision making and their main idea that it's uh, fact based management. Uh, so, uh, on one hand, people can take decisions based on the reports, on the other hand, uh, automated decisions can be fully driven with it. Um, and the idea behind business analytics and its importance uh, is that um, it provides uh, it, it provides the option to improve the business processes, the company's performance, the company's uh, output, uh, to change the workload, the teams, whatever, whatever what business is around. Uh, business analytics is here to help us to change it and to improve it. Um, so sorry. Um, Jira Service Desk, of course, is an important data source um, because at a certain level of service maturity, company requires a, a, a data of high quality to build analysis, to build reporting, and to provide actionable, actionable recommendations with confidence. And this is um, for the service desk teams or um, for IT teams uh, working at the service desk, it's, uh, it's very important to be able to measure and to, to get the high quality data and to use it in reporting to measure the KPIs uh, and so on. Um, in general, Jira service desk can help as a data source can help to have as all uh, all service desk projects on a single, a single view to keep the right direction, to allocate resources correctly, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, the service desk teams can see the actual productivity, can see the impact on customer satisfaction or user satisfaction, or sometimes they can, uh, can know their impact on the overall business performance. Um, besides this, um, Using Jira Service Desk or Jira Service Management as a data source uh, it allows uh, the user or the project manager or the top the top manager to dive uh, to dive deeper into a certain project or certain issue or certain issue types, um, go through it, understand the bottlenecks, adjust the time in workload or estimations, uh, and of course to measure the service desk service desk team effectiveness uh, to address the pain points. Um, as you know, uh, I believe, uh, as you know, as a Jira service management user, uh, it, um, this software consists a lot of useful information and a lot of useful data. Uh, for example, like ticket types, categories, assignees, statuses, resolutions, work logs, and, and all this stuff. And this all can be um, correctly used for reporting or data visualization in the BI tools. Um, now uh, there is a range of BI tools uh, available on the market. Here are mentioned uh, only a few of them. The most popular ones like Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, Google BigQuery, Google Data Studio, and Looker. I will not go in deep details about all of them. Uh, I would just say that um, the companies use them for various business purposes, uh, and uh, they use financial data there. They use the CRM data, customer data, and connecting Jira or Jira Service Desk as one of the data sources to have all the information in a single place. It's um, a really good option to have the big fit big picture, the so-called helicopter view. Um, I believe we will share the slides after the presentation. You can uh, go through. Um, if, if you are looking for the proper BI tool, you can go through and um, take a look what's available and what would, would be fitting you best. Uh, OK. Um, 
Of course, data expert from Jira or Jira service management has some uh, specific features. Uh, first of all, I would just uh, mention the options which we have to integrate Jira or Jira service management with any of the mentioned BI tools. So it doesn't mean that all the options are available for all of the uh, software, uh, third party software, but in general, for you to know how it's possible to do. First of all, of course, um, I believe you know about the, that uh, we have Jira API and uh, it's um, uh, very widespread and a common option to use. Uh, uh, I, I will mention it further uh, as an example uh, of when comparing two options. And go uh, and give you more details on that. But in general, it it can be used by any company, and it's available uh, for a wide uh, data range export. Um, one of the uh, the second option is that uh, the BI tools can have their own uh, packages or connectors to be able to connect Jira, for example, but not Jira service decks. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes not. Uh, they are not available, uh, such content packs of features, or connectors provided by the BI software is not always available for all of the options. For example, uh, we have uh, Power BI um, Jira content pack. It's for Jira only and for cloud. So for several versions, it cannot be applied. The same, the Luca have its own connection uh, connector, so it's uh, it it should be checked uh, by the company or by the users uh, if it's applicable in their uh, in their case. Uh, there is also an option to use CSV for Jira service management. Uh, it's uh, it it can be a good option. The only thing that I can uh, I need to mention that they have a limited date range. For example, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's not possible to export history. Uh, it's there are no calculated fields uh, there and uh, correct time work logs. So uh, it depends on what data you need. Um, but before choosing this option, you need to check uh, the availability of all fields that you need for export. Of course, I'd like to mention the recent um, feature introduced by Atlassian. It's a data lake. Uh, I believe if you heard about this or if you know, uh, it's uh, it now has a limited availability. It's available for Jira software and uh, for the and um, only for the certain packages. Uh, but uh, in general, it's a good start uh, for Atlassian. And I believe uh, that at the moment, this option is not mature enough, uh, but I believe that it has a good um, perspective uh, for the future to uh, somehow replace uh, the API and replace uh, even uh, maybe the third party uh, solutions. So currently, if, um, if you are interested in exporting Jira software data, and uh, you uh, have the appropriate conditions to test it, I kindly advise to uh, try this option because definitely from the perspective, uh, from the future perspective, uh, it, uh, it can be useful and it should be taken into consideration. Uh, and last, uh, the last opportunity, uh, which I uh, would like to mention is uh, using the third party add-ons, uh, for example, like as our apps, um, uh, so you can go on the marketplace, uh, pass the marketplace and try to find the connectors for, for, for the BI tool you are using. Uh, and this, um, this can be uh, helpful uh, because uh, the connection is uh, easier uh, using the third party add-on than for example, using the Jira API. Uh, but uh, not all the BI tools are presented. Uh, the connectors to all BI tools are present on the marketplace. Uh, so you need to take a look at this um, as well. Some tips uh, from my side uh, before starting data expert. Uh, of course, um, think about access permissions uh, and check it carefully uh, because you know that data availability issues uh, and that data security issues uh, uh, are in concern of many companies right now and not to have, um, not to allow uh, users see what they don't need to see or uh, 
to allow them experts of what they really need, uh, this, this should be also uh, checked uh, before starting the expert. Uh, the second tip, I believe it's obvious, but nevertheless, you know, that the 80% of uh, any uh, uh, idea <laughs> is a good preparation. Uh, so for the successful expert, uh, of course, you need to prepare to find out about uh, uh, your needs, uh, what you need to calculate, uh, what you need to see, what you need to monitor, and then define the field you need. This can also be helpful in order to optimize the data volume, so not to export what you actually don't need, and this is related to the companies with a big amount of data, with the thousands and, and tens of thousands of issues or tickets, uh, and uh, defining the needed fields and um, making uh, defining the exact data range can can help optimize uh, the export volume and of course save time for export. Um, the, the third tip is to check the field source uh, because uh, not all the features mentioned before allow to export. Uh, standard fields are of course uh, applicable for export, but not all of the features allow to export custom fields or for example, the third party apps fields. Uh, so before, um, before choosing the option, you also need to think about this. And of course, don't forget to mind the languages and writing systems which you or your customer has in Jira service management. Uh, because sometimes um, they can be uh, somehow re 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 retransformed uh, during export, especially, for example, with the Cyrillic, it happens often. That's why uh, mind this before you start your uh, Jira service management or Jira data export. Uh, further, I would like to show you uh, to compare the two options uh, of exporting uh, with the help of API and with the help of uh, third party application. Uh, I will be showing on the example of uh, export to Power BI. And um, so the idea is uh, not to show you which option is uh, better or worse. The idea is to show that they are completely different. Uh, and these are only two options about the mentioned. All of them are different. And uh, you as a user or Atlassian expert need to define the need before choosing the option because uh, they all are different. Uh, they have uh, different advantages and different use cases. So uh, my intent here today is to show you in the example of two, how this can look like. Uh, so let's take a look about uh, API exports. Um, so the first step is to identify, uh, this is what I just mentioned that you need to understand what Jira you need, uh, what, what data you need, and what data is available uh, from API. Then uh, you need to build a custom solution using programming language. As you know, the API requires some additional skills, so it's not um, a perfect option for just normal users. And the company needs to invest some time and uh, efforts and competence in this, uh, but the custom solution will be definitely what they need. Uh, the third step uh, is to integrate the developed solution with the Power BI or with other uh, BI tools uh, to check the settings and to uh, uh, set up uh, the full integration. The, third, the, the next step would be to actually import the data and build necessary dashboards. And here is the step where you can think about scheduled refreshes, for example. Yeah, if you develop it. So uh, this will help to, uh, uh, it can be constant refresh to have all your data actual at any time, or this can be a scheduled refresh. For example, you can schedule it in the morning on the 8 a.m. When you, when you come to the office, you already have your reports refreshed and you don't need to waste time on this. Uh, then of course, you'll need to train uh, your teams uh, who will be working with the reports or with dashboards to use the custom solution. And uh, further after that, uh, it may uh, require some support or improvements. Uh, so it's like, like a normal, normal development process. Um, from our experience uh, working with customers, um, the estimated efforts will in general take not less than 
not less and not much more than three weeks. It depends on the complexity of the solution which needs, which needs to be developed uh, with the API. But in general, it's possible to make it uh, approximately in average in such uh, time frame. On the other hand, uh, the second option could be to use the third party uh, application. And I will be showing you an example uh, based on the example of using one of our applications, which we have. Uh, it's called Power BI Connector for Jira. So it's also an option to connect your uh, Jira and of course Jira Service Desk to your uh, Power BI. Uh, so this is actually how the application looks like on the marketplace. And, and as you see, it's Jira Service Management uh, here as well. Uh, here are some features which I'd like to mention, which may be important uh, for, for the users or for the customers, that it has Power Query support, which allows to make uh, the calculations, the internal calculations and reshape data and with, with no code experience uh, to do it with the help of Power Query. Uh, there are some uh, customization features like filtering options, data selection, and all the stuff. Of course, the user permissions to uh, use the application, for example, it can be limited or to use the data for export. And uh, one of the features which may be important uh, is the ability to export um, not only a Jira, Jira, Jira or Jira service desk field, but also a wide range of uh, applications uh, like tempo time sheets, tempo planners, incident asset management, and uh, some others. So if we look uh, at the process at a glance, here uh, in terms of steps, it would be uh, approximately the same, but um, the, the process is a little bit different. Uh, so the first step, of course, is to install the application, to find it on the marketplace and to install it uh, on the Jira Service Desk in instance. Uh, then uh, uh, when the application is installed, uh, there is uh, a Power BI tab created in uh, your Jira Service Desk and you can go there and create a new data source. Um, the, this means that you need to select the data which you need for export. So just pick up the fields uh, which you need uh, to be exported. Uh, then the, the application, the Power BI Connector for Jira will generate a, a data source URL. You need to copy it. Uh, go to your Power BI desktop, uh, select all data feed and insert the URL. Uh, there also will be uh, an option to enter the credentials, uh, but uh, after doing this, uh, the data uh, will be uh, connected, uh, the, the connector will be connected and the data will be loaded into your Power BI in form of tables and you can start uh, shaping it as you uh, need. Uh, so the idea of, uh, of this uh, option is uh, to do the connection easily, so it can be much more quicker and uh, it doesn't require any specific um, development skills or any even um, Jira service desk or Jira administration knowledge. Uh, so if, if we compare the two options, uh, we can say that, for example, uh, Jira, uh, Jira API is um, more complicated and it uh, requires additional development skills. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, um, it's a good option for specific or sophisticated custom solutions and a specific analytic request. Um, and um, this, uh, as, as it requires uh, some resources and implementations and support, uh, this can definitely be helpful for uh, any um, for a, a complex uh, export uh, and uh, so as, as mentioned for sophisticated solutions and to some extent uh, it's free of charge so the user uh, doesn't pay anything the company doesn't pay anything for using this but only um, may need to invest some money in the development of the solution or in the support of it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, using the application uh, and the example of Power BI Connected for Jira that I mentioned, uh, it's uh, easier to start using it as it doesn't require any additional skills. Um, 
uh, it can also export numerous data. Uh, but at the same time, it's paid. Uh, and uh, so it works only as it uh, it works only as it uh, is uh, thought out to work. So it, it complete, it's a, it's a completely different option uh, to API where you can develop a custom solution for you. Uh, so the idea of this is to think first um, what expert you need. Uh, so what is the target? What data you need to export and how often you need it and do you need it instantly and constantly or you need it once and you need to refresh it once a week. So the, the, the idea is to the better you prepare, the better you think of in advance, the easier would be for you to choose uh, the tool to export and to uh, to find a solution uh, appropriately for your business needs. Um, in terms of other BI tools, uh, I mentioned only uh, in the example of Microsoft Power BI, I already mentioned that some of uh, tools like Luca, for example, and Power BI have their own connectors. We also provide to other applications which allow to export data from Jira service management into Tableau and into BigQuery. For Google Data Studio, unfortunately, uh, there is no solution on the marketplace, if I'm not mistaken, and we also don't have it. It's on our development plan, but nevertheless, it's not ready yet. Uh, so um, that's all about the technical part, and uh, I'm going moving forward to the business part of my presentation. And uh, here I'd like to uh, provide some information on what to monitor uh, with uh, Jira service management and why to do this. Uh, so the first thing uh, which uh, building reports for Jira service management is, uh, is to improve the service level. Um, of course, uh, in, in the name of the software Jira service management, there is a service inside and um, for the teams using it uh, it's uh, uh, for the teams using it it's the core activity and sometimes it's uh, core for the business that's why improving service level can be very important and uh, with the help of uh, reports in bi tools uh, we can manage the average speed of answer for example the expected time to resolution and compared to the actual time to resolution and this can be done easily in terms of projects or in terms of software in terms of assignees ticket types etc uh, so um, using jira service management data uh, in the bi reports uh, can can give uh, a lot of hints and um, can show the ideas how to improve the service level and the customer satisfaction in general and the performance of the service desk team in terms of service level. Uh, on the other hand, uh, using Jira service management data uh, in the BI uh, can help to adjust business processes uh, or uh, IT processes within a company. Uh, for example, uh, we can uh, monitor the trends of breakage times, uh, the software outage. Uh, we can um, measure and control and foresee the seasonal loads uh, and etc. And this, um, this can give us um, important information how the processes need to be adjusted inside the company or how the workload needs to be changed or sometimes even the software or the hardware uh, needs to be uh, changed if uh, we monitor the same recurrent uh, breakages or outages so this is also a good um, a good source of uh, inspiration how to make your businesses processes better to to increase the profitability of the overall performance of the business. And of course, I cannot mention that uh, it's important for the cost management uh, because IT uh, service desk teams and IT teams uh, and in general, the IT infrastructure can, uh, can be a good source of costs uh, for any business. And um, 
evaluating the cost of staff, uh, of their time, of their resources, by the times of internet, or by the uh, types of incidents, or over time in general, this helps uh, to see the problem areas uh, where, for example, service desk teams can be overspending money. And this um, may help the business leaders to see the potential to optimize or to or sometimes to spend more or to spend less. So in, in these three aspects of business, uh, Jira service management um, is a very important uh, data source. Of course, if the data is uh, uh, so, the, the data input should be correct. But uh, as soon as you, as a company or your customer, starts to uh, use Jira Service Management for reporting, you can reveal uh, the, the data leakage, and you can reveal that something is not um, uh, so somewhere the data input is not correct, and you can start changing this. And in some, uh, in certain period of time, you will already have the actual data which reflects the actual status of uh, everything in the business. So uh, even if, if it's uh, uh, not working exactly as you expected uh, uh, from the very beginning, it's never late to start and to uh, introduce some changes or introduce some new uh, processes uh, in data input to have the correct picture in the BI tool. And uh, as promised, uh, I will show you an um, example of dashboards. Uh, they are built in Power BI. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague who was expected to show you uh, as a live uh, BI dashboards was not able to join. And I will be talking about uh, pictures here. Uh, but what is um, important that uh, when you're using a BI tool, uh, any of this um, data, uh, can be selected or can be changed, for example, the date period, and everything changed instantly. So it's very easy to see uh, in um, over time, for example, or to go in details uh, in uh, for, for the certain issue type or for the certain e e ticket type or for the certain assignee. Uh, but this is um, so about this uh, dashboard, uh, it's Jira Services dashboard, which, would de which was developed and is used on a daily basis by one of our customers. It's uh, right now you see uh, our test data. But nevertheless, as you see, uh, you can select a project if you have multiple projects uh, in um, uh, your uh, Jira service management. You can select all of them to see the big picture, and you can select the certain project to see the details uh, about it exactly. You can select the data period where you need uh, what you need to analyze. Uh, you can see, uh, for example, the the total number of closed issues, average time to resolution in hours or in minutes, it depends on the processes. Here we see that it's in hours. We can see that uh, the major part of issues created are of medium priority and only 3% uh, are of high priority. Uh, we can see how much of them are closed and which is the average time for resolution. Uh, for these uh, types uh, of uh, issues. Um, we can see the issues by status. So that what, uh, what is the part of issue, issue in each status? Uh, we can uh, see how much uh, bugs or support requests or new features uh, are in. And we can see it over time. What is important to monitor them time perspective of how everything is uh, changed. So uh, this um, this is um, a service desk of uh, IT company, uh, but this can be applied for any business, uh, of, uh, for any service desk, um, for, for any service desk. Uh, and the second one I'd like to show you, it, it's, um, it has perspective in terms of assignees. Uh, so you can see, for example, here, the average time for resolution uh, by assignee. 
the target and the actual. And for example, we can see uh, who, uh, who are effective, more effective or less effective. And there is an option to go deeper in details to see the exact um, uh, tickets or exact issues where we uh, are running out of uh, estimated targets. Uh, we can see uh, the types uh, of, uh, here we can see only support, but uh, if there are several types of tickets like support box and um, new features, they also will be present here and we can say we can see how much um, the target is not followed, for example, or followed in terms of um, a ticket type. And um, we can also measure uh, in terms of priority uh, how we uh, fit the service level, for example. And here we can see in this part, we can see that for medium priority issues, we are far behind uh, the target. So it takes us much time. It, uh, it can give us insights in terms of uh, our time estimations or the effectiveness of the people or whatever. Uh, but on the other hand, we see that in terms of uh, high priority issues, they are um, approximately <laughs> fulfilled. Uh, so uh, this, this can be informative for the service desk manager or even for the company manager to see how everything goes and to find insights for um, making the decisions uh, to introducing changes or more investigations. So this is, this is an example how Jira Service Desk data can be used in um, Microsoft Power BI for visualization. And uh, this is only a number of KPIs, but actually this can be, you can build, what, you can measure whatever KPIs you need and you can visualize uh, them uh, as you wish. Uh, the, the, the most important is that it would be informative personally for you as a manager or for the company. Uh, and uh, it should provide um, information for uh, insights and further changes. Uh, so uh, if we sum up uh, the three parts that I've mentioned, uh, as, a, as a takeaway, I would say that um, implementing or adapting or improving the BI processes in the companies uh, is recently in high demand uh, because we have we are living in a fast world in changing world and uh, there are a lot of external changes uh, and external challenges um, and um, having all the information at a glance and introducing uh, BI processes can be helpful uh, to uh, stay on the wave actually. Uh, as a leading software, Jira and Jira Service Management uh, are an important data sources for business analysis and for the decision making. And adding Jira Service Management as a data source uh, can widen any company's data landscape. And uh, it's not, I would say that it's not a, a discussion point anymore uh, because uh, the company needs to consider uh, possible options and to select the most suitable one to use Jira Service Desk to improve the service level, to stay competitive, to stay profitable, um, and, and um, to stay uh, at least on time, but sometimes even ahead of time. So I believe that would be the key takeaways. I can only add that um, if you are ever interested in uh, some of the apps that I mentioned, uh, which we offer on the marketplace, feel free to contact me for a free demo and uh, feel free to contact me for request a discount for, ser for server for, or maybe for data center deployment options. If you, um, uh, if you find this solution appropriate for you, uh, if I can share my uh, contacts stay here, and uh, I hope that my presentation was interesting for you and I hope there was something new in it. And uh, I really hope that the companies you are working in or you're providing consultancy services for are using or will be using the business intelligence tools uh, for their businesses and will outperform using them. I thank you for attention and I will try my best to answer your questions. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, while I promote everybody to the panel, uh, there's one question in the Q&A box. Um, speaking of data permissions, mm -hmm. do you know a way to set permissions on the BI tool in, relations, in relation to permissions on the JIRA projects? Uh, for example, browse projects, uh, maybe even issue security levels. In EasyBI, this kind of comes since it's, it's a Jira add-on and users need to be added to, to cubes. Do you see an easy way to mirror this on external BI tools? Well, that's, uh, that's a good question. Um, it's difficult for me to answer exactly. I will also take it for consultancy. Uh, with my colleagues, uh, mm -hmm. because if you mean the on external BI tools on the side of, for example, Microsoft Power BI, I'm not sure how it's uh, managed there. Um, but in terms of, for example, our application, I know that the permission, uh, the permissions to use the applications are set by Jira admin, and um, the application takes into, into consideration the data access that a certain user has in JIRA or JIRA service management. And when connected to the external BI tool, uh, the user enters the credentials. Uh, the user will see only the data that is permitted for him. For example, he will not be, he or she will not be able to export uh, the data which uh, is out of uh, uh, its scope. So uh, the data which is not uh, permi permitted will not be able to be exported. And this is why the BI tool also uh, requires the credentials. Uh, but I will uh, write this down and uh, come back to you maybe with uh, more details from the part of external BI tool. Okay, I made a copy of the question I will send oh, it to perfect. you after Thank the you. Uh, So <laughs> Thank that's, um, what, do you have a question? Anybody? Yes, I have a question, but it's also a little bit technical question because I'm interested mm -hmm. about how the performance of Jira works when you refresh the data for for your product. So how does it work? So because especially for enterprise level companies that I work with, mm -hmm. so using the any BI solution put a lot of stress on the server, especially that it's single node and then uh, the loading time for pages and so on. It's really affect our users. So. So how about your product? Uh, well, this this uh, issue can happen, as I mentioned, when we have a huge, huge uh, uh, data range. Um, and that is why actually we test the applications under the high load, especially the data center versions. And uh, now we had such an issue with the cloud version and we fixed it, uh, building a, a bigger and brand new infrastructure. Uh, but in general, for the companies who face this, uh, so sometimes we are not able to influence this because when we have one million of lines, uh, of course, in, it, it can take time. On one hand, um, even if it's not influencing the performance, it can take time to export this. And that is why we offer for such bigger um, exports, we offer the scheduled refresh. For, as I mentioned, for example, you can schedule a refresh uh, starting at 6 a.m. And uh, when you come to the office at 9, you already have all your data. Uh, and um, this is one point. And the second point is the caching of data uh, when not all the data is refreshed at once, uh, but only the new data is uh, added to the Oh, that was my second amount. question about incremental yeah. data uh, mm -hmm. fetching. Okay, so it's implemented there. So you don't yeah. need to fetch from the scratch. It's also incremental. I see, yes. thanks. Okay, that's good. Okay. Daniel, do you have a question? No? No, no. Uh, I think the, the questions I have are a little bit too deep for oh. for the moment. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm working on uh, knowledge management knowledge base for ITSM and I, I hope today I get a, a chance to know how to put both data together data from the uh, knowledge base how how, uh, how many uh, um, how many sites are, are used and uh, are the users happy with with the with the knowledge base and 
the on the same time the um, ITSM ticket and um, uh, uh, progress time and so on. This this is what I hope, but it's, I think it's too de too detailed today. Okay, but we can write it down, Anna, mm -hmm. and um, maybe somebody will add it to our community post from your colleagues. Yes, of so, course. Yeah, so to, just to everybody else, we have a discussion in, the, in our community group um, with the invitation to this event, and we will basically add answers to the questions that we could not answer today um, to this community post. And then you can also have follow-up questions and start a discussion. That's what Thank it's done. So we will take this question and uh, see what it is. Um, you answered my two questions. So basically real time, um, real time is relative in this scenario. So there's always a delay. And sometimes if you have very large instance, the delay is very large. So it could be once a day or daily uh, data or whatever. Yes, it could be, but uh, you should also uh, keep in mind that anyway, a business analytics is based on the, um, let's say, on the past. Uh, so the only idea is to to have it uh, on, in a proper time, to, to have all the data at the proper time, and this is okay. uh, this depends on the business processes. So you can uh, schedule a refresh, or you can make it automatically. Uh, it, it depends. So not to overload, for example, if you if you need the data only once a day please make it uh, once a day. If you need it uh, constantly, for example, but uh, this is uh, where you can, uh, in terms of our application or in terms of uh, custom solution with the help of API, you can develop a, a small connector for the proper data that you need instantly, not to export everything, uh, but just select uh, 10 fields, which uh, show you exactly the KPI, which can calculate you exactly the KPIs, which you need to monitor all the time. And uh, this is uh, somehow a way to optimize, uh, optimize this. And all the rest can, can be monitored on uh, other regularity basis. And my other question would be, do you have a mechanism to trigger events in Jira? So for example, if you set a threshold in Power BI and then the threshold is reached, can you trigger somehow uh, a notification in Jira or a comment or something uh, uh, to update the Jira tickets that, that, are, um, that are violating the threshold or violating SLA or whatever? Uh, you mean uh, uh, monitoring this in the BI tool? Yeah. Yes. So, so basically, you use your BI tool for KPIs mm -hmm. that, for example, um, are the basis of an SLA agreement, something. Mm -hmm. um, and you set a threshold and you say, well, within 5% of that threshold, I want to be alerted that, uh, that we are reaching the threshold. And is there a mechanism to trigger that back to Jira and maybe trigger a notification? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm okay. not sure about this. Uh, so that's uh, that's a good question, actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from the business perspective as well. And uh, let me check. OK. And the uh, other question would be, um, uh, of course, you can. Um, it would be the, the question in the same direction. Of course, you can use Power BI to correlate all kinds of data. So not only from Jira, but also, mm -hmm. I don't know, we had examples, Salesforce integration, or you yourself mm -hmm. managed uh, Shopify and Magento and whatnot. Uh, and my follow-up question would be in the same direction. Could these external data for Jira update Jira tickets uh, if that would be necessary? Which also goes into Daniel's direction, I guess. So if, for example, the, the Shopify user gives me a five-star rating for my support, can I basically put that in the knowledge base that this was a super ticket and it had five stars uh, and this qualifies the ticket or something? It's the same question, basically, but different different trigger. So, uh, uh, so it's, from what I know, uh, in terms of our app, for example, it works... Um, how to say, a single way. So okay. whatever is changed in Jira is reflected on the BI side. And if um, something comes from another data source uh, and is reflected in Power BI, it, it's not uh, pushed back to Jira. 
automatically. Okay. So okay. it's one way uh, exchange. Okay, but that if, I, if a... I got the idea right. Yeah, yeah, but that would be a, an interesting question for your colleagues because you said your 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 main your focus is also software development. So, mm -hmm. um, if that would be an option to to program a trigger like that, or mm -hmm. to update Jira tickets based on correlated data from other sources, for example, yeah. for the purposes of a knowledge base, to mm -hmm. to qualify good answers or something. Um, so I, I, will, I, will, I will write it down and then send it to okay. you afterwards. Okay. And then we can, uh, you can see if, if there is an answer for mm -hmm. that. I would assume you need to have the connection with the JIRA ticket then in the BI tool. Uh, so that would be the tricky part. And uh, regarding your question first, Jörg, I have an idea. So you basically like when you do the report in the BI tool of your choice and you establish an uh, a value for an SLA or, and you want to get a threshold, you probably just have a JQL filter and have a filter subscription in Jira, uh, which you can basically like adjust via the API. I think you can change the, the filter, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I doubt that you like export um, open tickets in the BI tool because you just like want to see uh, the full fledged workflow a life cycle of a ticket, for example. So you don't usually, I would assume you don't export uh, tickets which are still in progress. Yes. Um, no, but then and there are all kinds of issues, uh, the time delay. So if you have a scheduled data export and stuff like that, um, if you see the threshold in the Power BI tool, it may already be too late. So um, no, but but again, general, the idea is, is, is it possible to have a trigger uh, back to Jira, um, because that would be, as I said, also interesting for Daniel's topic with mm -hmm. knowledge bases and, and qualifying tickets or whatever, uh, or qualifying answers for the knowledge base, for example. No? Um, that would be um, interesting. And you can think of KPIs which would indicate a low quality answer. So uh, did it, uh, was it necessary to reopen the ticket after mm -hmm. the agent, after the agent closed it, um, and how many times did that happen? That could be an indicator or KPI for for a low quality answer or, or bad solution, something like that. And you could le at least use it as a trigger for Jira to to start a review uh, of these tickets in some knowledge type situation or a uh, knowledge base type situation, whatever. Thank you very much, Anna. Yeah, thank Anna. you, everyone. So we are just in time to give you back to your children. Yeah, so, so you're, so, so, <laughs> so you're, yeah, so you're keeping your promise of one hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and thank you very much. Have a nice winter time in Kiev. Oh, and thanks. Hope Good to see you, you soon uh, somewhere, maybe in person even. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, just if you are wondering why we had the party lights out tonight, this was our 100th event that we announced in Bevy. So this is kind of a milestone, whatever. So thank you again, Anna, for being part of that milestone and for um, yeah, helping us with that topic. And I will send you all the questions and all that stuff after the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And that's uh, an interesting experience for me. And of course, I'm very happy to meet you all. Uh, and I will try to send you the uh, the information in terms of what you're interested in and thank you for your attention and have a nice evening okay bye bye bye, bye. bye.